Imagine this, cancer has been cured, a genetically engineered army is being created, and babies are being designed just like how you customize your Snapchat emoji. I mean, it sounds like science fiction and seems quite impossible, but what if it's not? What if there actually is a technology that could do this? Meet CRISPR. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. We could get a lot from the name, such as what the CRISPR locus looks like. Two scientists, Jennifer Dugna and Emmanuel Charpentier, were studying a bacteria called Streptococcus pyogenes. What was found was that this bacteria contains something called the CRISPR locus. The locus is a short piece of DNA consisting of sequences and spacers. The spacers contain the DNA of different viruses that the bacteria encountered. You could kind of think of it as the immune system of bacteria. So what was CRISPR initially meant to do? Well, let's say that we have a new pathogen that wants to enter a bacteria. In this case, the bacteria uses two proteins, Cas1 and Cas2, to cut out a segment of the foreign DNA and then add it to the CRISPR array, which is then known as the protospacer. Once the protospacer is added to the CRISPR locus, the bacteria saves it as memory, just like how our immune system uses antibodies to detect the antigen. If the same pathogen reapproaches, the bacteria is then armed and ready to destroy it, just like how our immune system can. The bacteria can then attack the foreign invader by transcribing CRISPR RNA. CRISPR RNA is transcribed using the CRISPR locus that I've mentioned before. This is how the Cas9 system is created. So with the Cas9 system, the bacteria cuts the foreign invader, thus destroying it completely. But there's a catch. How does the Cas9 complex distinguish between the foreign DNA and the CRISPR locus if both DNAs are the same? This is where we introduce something called PAM. PAM stands for protospacer adjacent motif. It's a series of nucleotides that comes after the protospacer sequence in the foreign genome. You could kind of think of it as a tag on a pair of genes. It helps differentiate between one pair of genes and the other pair of genes, even though they might look the same. In order for the Cas9 system to be able to cut the foreign DNA, the PAM sequence must be on it. It's kind of like a flag marking its territory. So this all leads to the big question of how CRISPR can be applied to humans. Well, scientists believe that if they could just alter and modify the CRISPR-Cas9 system, then they could use it to inactivate genes as well as add new genes. Jennifer Dudna and Emmanuel Charpentier were able to accomplish this in the year 2012, proposing that the CRISPR-Cas9 system can be used to edit genomes effectively. Also, due to COVID-19, many researchers and scientists were able to modify the CRISPR system so that it could be used to effectively and efficiently test for the virus in patients. This would result in no false positives as well as no false negatives. It would be able to efficiently find the virus in the human body, as well as effectively destroy its genetic makeup. So this is the science behind CRISPR and how it can be applied now. 